Hey guys, Michelle here from Cashel Creations. Um, hope you're having a fantastic day. Today I want to do another sublimation product um, or tutorial and we are going to sublimate socks. <laughs> so I will link the um, item below if you're interested in making these. Um, they do sell them in bulk. So these are a size medium for adults which basically fit um, I would say women's sizes between 5 and 10 um, and then maybe teenagers um, if you're looking for men's sizes I tend to go with a large but I'm gonna go ahead and make some Care Bear socks to match my um, recent tumbler that I made and I thought it would be kind of fun to put um, the sunshine bear on the bottom and then these fun little ensembles on the um i guess the ankle portion of the sock so i put this little mashup together and i printed it out in sublimation ink um, inside the socks which you can see are flat lay um, and have a shim inside are these metal shims um, that i purchased off of amazon i'll go ahead as well and put these in there now these metal shims only come one of each size so this would be for a large sock in here is for the medium socks I already um, put it inside and then it also comes with a kid size so you get three shims one for each side and then basically what I did was I just took um, cardboard from a box measured it out with a pencil cut it up and then now I have two so instead of buying two of them I ended up doing that because they are a little bit expensive um, again it's it's metal because it has to withstand the heat so my suggestion is I've done this a few times before and I want to say this is probably my um, seventh time using the same cardboard shim but obviously you can always remake more by doing the same method if the cardboard one gets too flat or loses its strength and mold so it's just something to um to think about so you can save some money there so we're gonna go ahead and what i want to do first is um the bottom so as you can see here this is where your um, heel would go and so this portion of the foot your toes would be on this side and this is the bottom of the sock so what i want to do is cut up my um sublimation print and I know this doesn't really fit in screen <laughs> but this sheet of sublimation paper is actually a 13 by 19 um, and I only I'm able to print that because I do have an SG 1000 with the extended bypass tray in the back um, so I'm able to print larger sizes so I'm going to basically cut these down and I did measure them what I basically did was I opened up a rectangle in the Silhouette program and then I, because um, I use Silhouette Studio to do my designs in, and I basically um, put them as, as I want them. I did get these images off of Etsy, so if you're wanting to do the similar project, I will list the link down below. Now, sometimes these links do sell out, so I do apologize if it's not available when you go ahead to place the order. Um, but at least you get to see the shop. And then if there's something else you like there, then obviously you can make that purchase. So, what I always suggest to do when you're doing sublimation, regardless of um, the product, if it is a um, fiber type of uh, substrate, I definitely recommend to lint roll. If it is a substrate that's like a tumbler or of, um, you know, solid, I guess, non-cotton or polyester, well, it wouldn't be cotton, but if it's not a material of fabric, then I would definitely alcohol wipe it or um, shimmy it to get all the lint off of it or dirt or dust. Because sometimes there's things on there you cannot see. And if it's white, sometimes it will turn those particles blue. I'm not sure how and why. That's not my cup of tea of scientific nature. But <laughs> um, anyways, that's what I've come across. 
and it is quite quite frustrating in my mind when you see blue little speckles on your item and you're like how did that get there because i didn't put that there so what i want to do is i do want to put this upside down and i want to kind of center it from the toes to the heel mainly because i do want the person if they put their feet up they have that upright so I'm hoping I make some sense to you. So I did um, want to make sure that it is even. And you do want to use um, heat tape. You don't want to use scotch tape. You do want to use heat resistant tape. Now I do know that you may find it in an orange or yellowish tint. Purple tint or even a blue tint. But you definitely want to make sure that it is heat resistant. Um, if it's not and you use regular tape you will have the sticky glue residue left and then I don't know of a way to take that off so just something to keep in mind now one thing I am not doing that you may notice is I'm not putting a sheet on the inside um, because I do have a shim in here it's going to protect the other side of my sock so I'm just worried about placing the images the way I want to. Now this one I am going to put the correct way because it's going to be the um, ankle portion of the sock. So what I want to do is just make sure, so I just want to make sure that when I press it, it is going to be sort of even in my mind. And so, you know what I might do is trim this down so I can make sure it is where I want it to be since it's not going to be a wrap. So let's lint roll this again. And so let's do the top because I didn't think about that. These little guys are so cute. All right, so there is that, and there is that. And now I want to say that that is lined up perfectly. So if it goes off to the sides, that is fine. I did, um, uh, let's see how we're going to do this. Uh, let's go this way. May have to cut some more. I just want to make sure that it stays in place when we do um, press it so it doesn't shift. And let's cut some more tape. So when we put these together, <clears throat> excuse me, when we put these together, we are going to do both sides, which means <coughs> excuse me which means we're gonna have to lay down butcher paper on the other side to prevent from the ink going on the heat platen and I will show you that in a minute now while we're doing this I do have my heat press being heated up to oh it's gonna wrap around isn't it I see through the thing the the bears paws so let's see if we can get that on there um, we are going to be, um, what was I getting at? Um, we're doing it at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. And I just find that the right temperature setting for my heat press. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you do a bunch of sample options if you're trying out a new heat press because the temperature can be different. All right, I think that's good. All right. So I think we got our first one set up. We're gonna go over to the heat press and then press this and see how it turns out. I um, don't think I can do two at one time, but let's try it, I guess. So let's move this over and do this one at the same time. So again, we're gonna lint roll this. Okay, and we're gonna put this one upside down and I'm going to try to get it centered. All 
in fact let's do it the correct way right because we want them to be lined up so let's try to get this in the right place and I think that is the same as the other side let's hope okay and then we're gonna do the top and we're gonna trim it down like we did the other one can't wait to see what these look like slide these down so you guys can see them in frame and I'm gonna kind of make sure we do the same thing and again I gotta cut more of the tape didn't cut enough tape as I thought I needed um, and that sometimes happens um, Let's just put that there for right now and then I'm gonna move this one off and then we're gonna go here and this one up here and we're going to tape it over and then I have this one here I need a few more This one has the same thing wrapping around. All right, so I think we're ready. Hopefully I didn't roll that up on the top. I can't remember now. Oh, and this one moved. Okay, so let's head over to the heat press and go press it. Okay, so we're over at the heat press. And so what I'm gonna do is for right now, I am going to put this down just in case we need it, even though I feel we don't. Um, with the medium socks, I will show you underneath. My plan is a 15 by 15, and these socks are right at 14 inches. So the one thing you do want to make sure of, if you can see that in frame, is that you want to make sure your coverage is there. And what I mean by that is that here is where my image is and here's where my image is and you definitely want to make sure it's within that cone. If um, it was too long and, yeah, let me put this out. If it was too long and there was no image here, this hanging out would be fine. The other thing we want to also take into consideration is the pressure. Um, this is thicker than a t-shirt, but also not as thick as the last substrate I was using. So I'm going to go ahead and just adjust it slightly. I don't know if we can get two in here, so let's try that. I don't want them to move. I think we can, but I don't need that there. So we want to make sure, there we go, overlap. Hope you guys can see that in this screenshot. Um, let's see how it works. Hopefully it does. So what we're going to do is we're going to put another butcher paper on top. And this is to protect the ink from going to my heat platen. And we're now going to press it for a minute. All right, so it's almost done. And what we're gonna do is we're going to um, lift it up and we are going to move it over to the desk. And that way we're gonna let it cool off so that way we can flip it over and do the other side. So we're just going to remove this piece. You are definitely not going to reuse this as you can see. 
Um, some of the ink didn't come off, but it's just better to be safe than sorry. So we're gonna go ahead and take this over to the desk. All right guys, so something I do wanna point out to you that I didn't realize when I pressed it was that this portion right here didn't get um, heated. So off camera, I went back since I didn't remove anything and pressed it for only 40 seconds. So I'm praying to God that when we remove it, it's pristine. So we'll be <laughs> looking at all this together. So let's do the bottom portion first. I'm just going to remove this. It came out super, super cute. Um, you could always use a lint roller to kind of get those lines out if you want. Um, but I think that's adorable. We'll go to this one next. Super cute. This one looks a little bit better centered than this one. Um, this one looks like it's uh, sideways. So... Again, trial and error, that's how we learn, right? Um, it looks like I'm giving too much pressure, so I might go back again and reduce that. So now we'll do um, the ankles. <laughs> These came out so adorable. Okay. So what do you guys think? Look how cute that is. And then obviously this would be the feet when they're, you know, on it. So let's do this side. Okay, so this one went off the line. So what do you guys think? I think they came out super cute. You could definitely see um, the placement of it. I mean, it's, I don't think it's that much of a big deal um, with one being up more than the other, but it could be the um, movement of the stretchiness of the, since this one's the metal one and this one is the, uh, the cardboard one. So let's go ahead and now prep the other side because we're only doing the top. And we're kind of going to do the same format. We are going to trim around all this stuff. These came out so freaking cute. Okay. Looks like there's hair on that one. So uh, we want to lint roll. This time, hopefully, I remember to do it. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. See, I feel like I feel like I moved it. I think it's taller, or is it just my imagination? All right, we're gonna place it there. And while the pressing was going on, I actually cut more tape this time, so I'm prepared. So we're going to wrap that on this side and then we're going to do the other side. And we're going to wrap it and wrap it and then this part is going to go like this I want to make sure we get that crease out. I think that's good. All right, so this one we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna trim around it. And then we're gonna go upright. And we are going to do the same thing. And we are going to one. I don't know what's with that on my 
fingernail. And then our last one. All right, so now what we're gonna do is since we're only pressing the top, I think we'll be fine. But again, we are gonna put butcher paper underneath because the sublimation ink with the heat can also be released on the other end. So let's head over to the heat press and get all that set up. Okay, so we're back over at the heat press and we are going to make sure that the shims are in there. We are going to bring down our pressure again. <laughs> since that wasn't, it was too, too uh, harsh. And we are going to cover these. Now I'm gonna make sure, yeah, here's my platen. So I'm gonna make sure that it is covered this time. And now we're going to press it for 60 seconds. All right guys, so it's about to complete and then we're going to move it from the heat press back over to the table to cool off. garbage and then we are going to move these off the heat platen and back over and then I'm not going to use this anymore and so we just turn it off and let's head over back to the table all right guys so we're back over here at the table they are still quite hot but I am going to um, remove them anyways because I'm impatient and what's nice is none of the ink came off the other side, which is fantastic. And the other side still looks great. So let's go ahead and unwrap these beauties. Look how cute. And then we're gonna do this one. I just love how vibrant it looks. Alright, so this one kind of looks like um, the hands got um, nicked, but that could have just been my sizing issue. So we're going to go ahead and remove this from the shim and have a viewing. So let's bring this out. And so that's how it would look. And so, if you wanted it to be displayed this way, or if you wanted it to be displayed this way, because remember the person's foot is gonna be up like that on the table, so you can um, read what it says, right? And then um, if they don't wanna see it, that's on the bottom of the shoe. <laughs> these are so cute, I'm so sorry. I'm like addicted to these things. I'm sure you guys feel the same way when you make something for the first time and you're like, oh my god. So, here's what I'm going to do. What do you guys think? I would love to know um, your perspective on it. And as you can see, um, my shims, one is handmade and one is the metal one that I was telling you about earlier in the video. Um, so I really, really had fun making these and then showing you how I make them. I will definitely link all the um, items that I used in the video down below in case you're interested in doing it yourself. So you actually know that this is the product that uh, works for sublimation. I know sometimes it's kind of hard when people say it's a sublimated item and then it doesn't really sublimate right. So, um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to try something um that you've been thinking about doing or that you have and you're afraid to use it because trust me i've been there plenty of times there's still stuff in my storage room that i have not yet played with so i am with you in that boat definitely leave a comment down below if you have any questions concerns comments suggestions um tips that you've used that work for you that you didn't see me do that you think i can do better i'm all for it have a great rest of your day and i will catch you in the next video take care